All right. Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is August 17th, 2021. And um, I came on today because I just felt led to to uh, show my face today to talk over a few things. I want to, um, a few truths here that I want to get out. As you guys know, the Lord has uh, showed me that he's going to be um, giving me truth, God's truth, and that I'm to share everything that I receive from him. In the last couple of days, I've been feeling led to do this, but I kept putting it off. And then just a few minutes ago, when I finally came out to uh, share this with you, I got a message from my friend Melissa from Midnight Hour Oil. And she said that she had gotten a text from somebody asking them when, they, when she thought the rapture was going to be. Because uh, apparently they had listened to John Fenn and he said it wouldn't be this year. And Melissa said that after she um, uh, got this, or after she read this message from this guy, first thing she said to him is um, right here. Um, da -da -da. She said, I responded that only the father knows when he is going to send his son back to get his bride. And she said, as I was going over these thoughts in my mind, I heard a soft but clear word come into my spirit. And that word was time is up. And to me, I felt like this was, okay, this was God saying, yes, I need to get this out today. Okay, so that's absolutely amazing. And I agree. I really, truly do agree. Um, I know people complain because they're like, you've been saying this for years, but you got to remember, God is merciful. You know, he's been... Um, showing people this and putting it on many people's hearts to to get them so that we can prepare so that we can be ready he's not going to say i'm coming and then come the next day he's he god is merciful he's always going to give us time i mean if you look back at all the other things that the lord had spoken to and spoken of it took years sometimes for things to pass okay so we don't want to focus on that we want to focus on being ready so what i want to share with you is a couple things that a couple questions that I have been uh, keep getting asked. So I wanted to, uh, since we're studying this right now in our Bible study group, um, like I said, the Lord's been just laying it on my heart to go ahead and and share that this truth. Now, there's a couple of people I want to say that um, I'm always talking about once saved, always saved. And actually, you know, what he said to me was correct. That not everybody um thinks the way that this one special group does and he's absolutely right because like with me with my relationship with christ yes i'm saved and i feel secure in that because i know that you know that i obey god that i i abide in him so yes you can feel very confident that you are saved so uh he was correct in that that i shouldn't just say you know lump everything in that group so what i'm going to do instead is say that there are certain people out there and and it isn't hearsay these are things that were specifically said to me and when i had asked questions or when i listened to a certain video these were certain things that were spoken this isn't rumors this isn't just something i made up so what i'm going to do first is um the, the questions that I want to answer today and that are, are strictly out of the answers are strictly out of the word is what does it mean to believe in Jesus? And the second one is, is what does it mean to abide in Christ? OK, now the first one, the first one's a hot topic because the certain group of people that are out there, they have told me personally that uh, following Jesus is crap, that we don't have to love him that all of our sins are paid for, as in what I'm saying is, is if you just believe, okay, like I believe Jesus Christ uh, was the son of God. He died on the cross for my sins. So they're saying, if you just mentally believe that and accept it, then all your sins are covered. And basically you're all set to go. You're signed, sealed, and ready to go. Okay. They're saying that, um, that you don't have to abide in Christ, that you don't have to follow him. And you can do whatever you want because Jesus already knew you were going to do this sin, you know, when you were 52 and you're already forgiven. And that is not true. I know one very popular uh, YouTuber said that you could be at a, you could be worshiping the devil. And when the rapture comes, you'll go because you once believed. These are the things that I'm addressing because these are all lies. And I'm going to tell you why they're a lie. 
So let's start with what does it mean to believe in Jesus Christ? When Jesus says, if you confess with your mouth that I that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, believe in your heart, you believe Jesus in your heart, you will, you will be saved. Now, it didn't say you are saved. It said you will be saved. Okay. So let's go to what does it mean to believe? So I'm going to start here. We are, the chapters that we're going over is, um, uh, well, they're, they're different ones here. So let me just, uh, this one is uh, in John 14, 1. Okay, so I'll just give you the scriptures because when my husband does the Bible study, he when he's when we're working on like right now, the commandments, he does different, he goes through the Bible and does the different um, chapters in that. So we're just going to start here with John 14, 1. And Thomas, and we're in uh, verse 5, where Thomas says to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. All right? So... Right there, it tells us very clearly. How do we do this? He says very clearly, no one comes to the Father except through Christ. Not once believing, but through Christ. So let's go further on to this. How do we believe? Now we go down here further, and these are the exact words spoken by Jesus Christ himself, where he says, and this is in uh, verse 12, we're still in John, when first, or verse 12, this is what Jesus says. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Okay, let me read that again because this is very important. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. This is what it means to believe. If you believe in Jesus, you will also be doing the works of Jesus. Okay, now right here, people freak out when you say the word works. We're not supposed to be working. Absolutely not. They're misunderstanding us. So any of you that have read the Bible, you know anything about Jesus, what kind of works did he do? You know, he did healings. Um, if you just go back through uh, just um, through the four Gospels where it talks, where Jesus is, is literally speaking and, and, and he's... Uh, going through all the different situations on how to handle things and the things that we do. You know, we're talking about forgiveness here. We're talking about loving our neighbor, okay? So let's go on again. Now we're going to go on to, now that we know that what it means to believe in Jesus is uh, to do the works that he did, let's go back and say, and now um, talk about abiding. Now, whenever I tried to speak truth before, there were certain people on YouTube that would come out and say, you show me anywhere in the scripture where it says, if I do this, do this, I'll lose my salvation or I won't have my salvation. But you need to listen to what Jesus is saying. Jesus is our atonement, okay? He's the atonement for our sins. Let's make sure I wrote that down correctly too. Because I don't want, uh, I get a lot of slack. Yeah, Jesus was the atonement. He paid for everything, okay? So when we believe in him and we do the works in him, he, you know, he, Jesus is the one we're trusting for our salvation. So let me just keep going here. Now I'm going to read this. Well, actually, let me just tell you real quick. What does it mean to abide in Christ? Okay. It means when we obey him, when we do what he says, remember, Jesus said he did what the father asked him. That's why he abided in the father because he did what was asked of him. And then he asked us to abide in him, to abide in his love. And we do that when we obey him and when we do what he tells us to do. So I'm going to read this to you in John 15, 1. It says, I am the true vine and the father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes that it may be, or every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. Now, already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Now, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. 
If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Now, I know that you guys understand what this means. Jesus is clearly telling us what we need to do. And our job as believing in him is to do what he did, to do his works. Okay? Abiding in him. And actually, the, the, the main thing is love. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor. This is what it all boils down to. Jesus said he abided in his father. We are to abide in him. What does that mean? It means basically doing what he says to us to do. I mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but remember when Jesus, right before they came to get him, he said, I would just as soon you take this cup from me, Father, but I don't want my will. I, I pray your will be done. He was obeying his father, even though he didn't want that. But he obeyed him, and by obeying him, he was abiding in him, and by abiding in him, he was in his love. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and you prove to be my disciples. Now, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. And here's another thing. And I get, again, even pastors on YouTube that say that this is not true. They say we don't have to do this, that all we have to do is believe. He says right here, Jesus' own words, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. And here it is, this is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you to do. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father, I have made it known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you do ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. Now, again, I have been specifically told that I don't have to love God. They, in these people, they twist the scriptures. I am here to tell you God's truth. This is the truth. So we got in a really good discussion last night. And someone made a really good point. And I'm going to share it with you. And I got it right here in 1 John 1, 5. This was really interesting. So we were talking and it says, This is the message that we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. Okay, now remember that. Those that love God, love their neighbor, and they, uh, they follow the commandments, and they do the works of Christ. So if you think about some of the people that you've seen on YouTube, you know that they are not walking in the light. Okay, so remember that. They are walking in darkness. They lie and do not practice the truth. So these people that are having dreams, these people that are pastoring to you, you need to think twice. When you're listening to them, okay? Because if you know this truth, when you go out there and you do listen to other people, you're going to know, wait a minute, that's not right. Wait a minute, this person is calling somebody a fat Pharisee. This person is calling somebody a Satanist. This person says, this person hears from the devil. This person says that I'm leading people to hell. So one, are they loving their neighbor? Are they loving God? Because when you do that, there should be no name calling. Now, you guys know I went through a season where I uh, copied some videos from other people because I was so adamant about getting after this, you know, this group of people that were believing this way. And I did some things I shouldn't have done, and I regretted and I repented of that. And now God is using me to just speak the truth. Okay, I've repented. I pray for all those, anyone that has come, come against me. I pray for them. Because again, I, I, I drop all charges. That way God can work with that person. Because God doesn't want to lose any of us. 
So when all these people are out here cutting each other down and they're mocking and they're taking doing all this, seriously, are they loving God? I mean, it's an easy, it's a, it's an easy answer. Are they loving God? Plain and simple. All right, so let me continue with what we were talking about. So it also goes on to say, if we walk in light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from all sin. If we walk in the light. Okay, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Okay, so basically these people that say they're covered until they're, you know, just until they go home, I guess. That's not, the, you know, apparently all their sins are forgiven. That's not true. You know, as I walk this road, I need to, when I fall off the road here or there, just like my friend, that video, that dream I shared with you, Jesus convicts us and he brings us back on that, on that narrow road. Okay. We're walking side by side through this life. I'm trusting Jesus with my salvation. I'm following him. I'm doing the works of the Lord and I'm trying, you know, what he says to do, I'm doing, which is like I said, love God, love your neighbor. And, and for a while I wasn't doing that. Okay, and let's see. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. So here's some other claims to say. I've heard it said we can't possibly uh, repent of all of our sins. Well, right there it says that we can because we have Jesus as our advocate. We can go to him and say, Jesus, anything I've done today, if I any sin that I have committed against you, I repent and I ask you to please forgive me. Now, does that mean I have to list every single sin? No. I mean, they're trying. What they're trying to do, these some of these people, they they uh they don't want to give up their flesh. They don't want to give up th what they're doing. They want to feel comfortable and say, "Oh, thank God, I'm saved. I just have to believe," without doing any of the works. Okay, but it says in the Bible that this walk is hard. It isn't supposed to be easy. It's not easy. Okay. And it also says in, in Jesus is not for only our sins, but also for the sins of the world. So guess what? We can also pray for the whole world. We can pray for other people's sin. But yet there's some of those saying, oh, that's too hard. You can't do that. You can't possibly remember everything you did. And it also goes on to say, by this, we know that we have come to know him, Jesus Christ, if we keep the commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep the commandments is a liar. And this is the point I'm getting to where we talked about last night. So let me read this again. Whoever says, oh, I know him. I know, I know God. I'm a Christian. I believe. But they don't keep his commandments. They're a liar. So let me ask you this. A, a gentleman last night asked this question. So is, is he saved? And I want you to think about that. If you say, I'm a Christian. If I sit here and tell you, I'm a Christian, I go to church every Sunday, I walk people across the road, I believe. But I don't do the works that Jesus did. Am I really believing him? Think about that. So, hey, I'm a Christian, I believe, I'm going to heaven. I don't need to follow the commandments. I don't need to really love my neighbor because you know what? He drives me crazy. I'm saved. I'm good to go. So think about it. Think really hard about that question. Those that say, I know God, but they do not keep his commandments is a liar. This is the word of God. This is God's truth. It says right here, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. But it goes on to say, whoever keeps his word in him truly is the love of God and it's perfected by this we may know that we are in him whoever says he abides in him you really should I mean it says ah but think about it you really should walk in the way in which Jesus walked you know that's like saying okay those of you that that you do know him and he in and, and, and whoever says that he does abide in him you really should walk the way he did so let's discuss Jesus how did he walk well, he was a servant. He was very humble. What did Jesus do? 
He performed miracles. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He provided food. He forgave. He forgave. He forgave. He loved his neighbor. He loved God with all his heart. He obeyed God, so he abided in the Father. He died for our sins. He was very humble. I mean, just think about the, the way Jesus was. We are to walk like that. Now, is that so hard? Is that really hard for me to, to just say, you know what? I know you hurt me, but hey, it's okay because I love God. And he asked me to forgive you. So I truly forgive you. And if you have trouble, Jesus, I need help. I need help forgiving this person because you forgave me. So we are to do the works of Jesus. Everything he told us. What did he tell us? It's the whole Bible. Read the whole Bible. Read and learn about Jesus. This is what we're supposed to do. He says, Beloved, or this is what an Apostle John, Beloved, I'm writing, I'm, I'm writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard at the same time. It is a new commandment that I'm writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother, he's still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is, the, is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. This is the commandment of love your neighbor. Now, there's a certain person, well, no, there's a group of them that say when, when we ask questions, honest questions, or try to correct them, they say that we are to be marked and avoided. Is that loving your neighbor? Is that Jesus? Would Jesus do that? That's my whole point. He says right here, if we say we know him, then we ought to walk the way he walked. And I've just shown you in the word of God that to believe in Jesus, and these were his exact words. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do because I'm going to the Father. Abiding in Christ. Abiding in his love. It's by doing what he tells you to do. When I love my neighbor and I love God, then I'm abiding in Christ. I'm abiding in his love and his love is, and he's abiding in me. The one thing he's going to ask you when you pass from this world is, did you learn to love? Did you learn to love? If you do what he says, you abide in his love. So anybody out there that says that we have to do nothing but believe is a liar. They're not walking with God. Because if that's all they're doing, they're not saved. Now, if I'm wrong, I know God will correct me. But these are the words of God. This is what the Lord put on my heart. So again, think about the question I asked. If you say, I'm a Christian, I don't do anything... Uh, but don't do anything that Jesus told me to do, which is believing in Jesus. Am I saved? Do I have a relationship with Jesus? Am I going to be raptured? And what if I die tomorrow and get hit by a truck? I want you guys to pray on this. Pray on this, okay? It is to do the works of Jesus. It all comes down to one thing, love. I can't express it enough. And we're still studying um, this whole thing. So I'm excited to see what else we come into. But like I said, I kept putting this off. and uh, But the Lord just kept leading me to it. And then Melissa wrote me that today. And it's like, you know what? Time is short. So I need to get this out there. So again, I'm not condemning anybody. Listen, I've been on this road since 2010. And I'm learning every day. I've made so many mistakes, but praise God, he corrects me and he brings me back. Please don't let anybody tell you that you don't have to do anything. It's not true. Yes, Jesus paid for our sins. So that all we have to do is believe in him and follow him. Do the works that Jesus did. Those that say that they're already done, I'm sorry, but you're not in your glorified body. So no, you are not done. 
you are still being sanctified. This walk every day is a journey. And I pray that you're walking it with Jesus side by side. I pray that you're abiding in him. Doing what he tells you to do. And it's not hard. It's just our flesh that keeps us from it. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor. Be like Jesus was. Or how he is. Sorry about that. So I pray for each and every one of you guys. I truly, truly do. Time is short. Share this with anybody that, that needs to know this. And as always, please pray on this. Okay, like I said, this is just something that the Lord has been leading me into truth. And that is what I am to share. And sometimes, yes, I still get insecure about things. But uh, hopefully I explained it good, well enough. So I love you guys. I pray you have a great day. Bye.